Samantha from Do Some Tutorials here, and today we're going to be creating a fun cane using Skinner Blends and Bullseye Canes. So I've already created the Skinner Blend. Now this Skinner Blend was done with Primo uh, Blush, I do believe it is. Let me just give it a double check. Yes, it's done with Primo Blush, Primo Turquoise and Primo Wasabi. And there were equal triangles, three triangles, to create this. Now. The amount of clay that I used for each colour was half a small block of Prima. So that's what you're going to need. Then you're also going to need about um, three fourths of a block, small block of white, and the same amount for some black, about three fourths of a small block of black. Okay, so we're going to create the bullseye cane first. So you need a nice log of white, like so. And this is probably about two centimeters in diameter. Then you're going to take some black, and I'm just going to trim up these edges. And this is a sheet of black that has been rolled out to about two millimeters thick, which is the thickest setting on my pasta machine. Okay. Then we're just going to wrap that around. And if I have to stretch it, I'll stretch it. There we go. Okay, that's one wrap. And we're going to do a second wrap. So we have a total of about four um, millimeters of black around it. Okay, and I just want to reduce this down just a touch so that it sits nicely on there. Then we'll wrap that around as well. Okay, there we go. Just pinch that together. And there we go, we've got our balls I okay. okay. So now I've got the skinner blend ready, so that's off to the side. We don't have to worry about that. If you don't know how to make a skinner blend, I do have a link to that in the description below the video. Uh, it's pretty easy. Uh, go watch that tutorial for an in-depth explanation on how to re how to create a skin event. Now though, we just want to reduce our bullseye cane into something quite long because we're going to be cutting out many different pieces. So you'll just continue rolling, twisting, pinching. I like to pinch these edges it creates this waste. Now just something that I want to point out is the more clay you use in a cane, so creating a bigger cane, uh, the less waste you have. That's just something that I found as I have created canes. The smaller the cane, the more waste you're going to have. So if you have the capacity, make the cane fairly large. So if you don't like the waste, the larger it is, the less waste you're going to have in proportion to the amount of um, usable cane at the end. So you can see this is reducing pretty quickly but I want to get it down to at least half the size before we start cutting out pieces. Okay, And here it is. You can see we have quite a bit to work with here. So first thing is I'm going to just gently cut off a section and we're going to put that to the side because we are going to use that and you can see here that the uh, there's been a little bit of distortion because this is how it actually is supposed to look. Uh, you can see there's a little bit of distortion here, but that's perfectly fine. I'm going to put that off to the side, then I'm going to continue reducing this down a bit. And I'm just essentially going to cut every once in a while a piece once I've reduced it down a bit more. And then we will put those all together in our cane a little bit later on. I'll just cut off sections like so once you finish reducing until you run out of cane essentially because I want uh, variations in how big our bull size are going to be there we go 
So now the next step, now that we've got all those off to the side, is we're going to take our Skinner Blend and we're probably going to keep it about 2mm thick. But what I want to do is I want to reduce this down so that it's not so wide. So just fold it over, like so. Just so you form a nice thick slab which is easy to work with and doesn't, um, it's not so finicky. And just take it and press on these sides, like so. And you can flip, press again. And this is going to help um, shorten that blend so that we can cut more slices from it. Just press together, like so. Okay, and then once you're happy with the length, take your roller and begin to roll out. And that will uh, widen it again, so you'll want to just pinch gently again so and then roll again because we're going to be putting this to the pasta machine I don't want to stress my machine out by putting something that is uh, too thick through but there we are, you can see that we've got a blend now which is much longer and it's going to yield a lot more uh, slices now I'm going to put that through my machine and now we have a much longer nicer blend we had a little bit of a rip here, so I'm just gently going to heal that up, like so. It doesn't matter too much. And now we're ready to work. So now I'm just going to put it so, so that you can see what I am doing. There we go. Just going to trim off this end here. And I'm going to cut pieces that are about, um, about two centimeters long, I'd say maybe Maybe a little shorter than that. Okay, and that should be enough for the moment. Just take those, separate them out. And there's more, but I want to don't want to go through the whole process yet. And then I want you to take your bullseye canes. I want you to chop them to the same length. You can even go with your bullseye canes and just chop them all right now to the right length. But I don't have the time to do that right at the second because I want to show you what it's going to look like. So I'm just going to cut one of each size. I have about five different sizes here. There we go. Then you're just going to take that and I'm going to put the biggest one in the middle there. Then second largest over here. Like so. And then just gently flatten them out. Like so. Grab another piece. Press that together, like so. And then you can use a skewer. Let me just grab one quickly. There we go. You can use a skewer to just gently press that Skinner blend into the holes that are left. And then just wrap the clay around, like so. Go and repeat the process on the other end. There we go. And now you have something that looks quite pretty. Then go cut a bunch more bullseye canes, pop them along the length, add another one, and just repeat until you essentially run out of Skinner Blend or bullseye canes. Okay, and here is how it looks now that I've finished putting it together. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to just start pressing it down and reducing it. So there's one side a touch. Uh, longer than the other. So I'm just trying to get all nice and equal. I'm also pressing along these sides so that I get it into a rough rectangular shape. And I technically have made one of these canes before but I want to turn it into uh, I want to turn it into a flower so we'll see how it looks once that happens. I'm just going to reduce it now because we need to get that going. So I'm just using my roller to press in the middle of this K. 
cane and that will help reduce it. And now you're going to get a bit of distortion so let's press it back and I'm just trying to work it so you don't get too much distortion. Press it down onto the tile while you're reducing it can help. Now this is a cane that is um it's it's okay if it gets a bit distorted. It's a it's a um, organic cane, so don't worry about it too much. So once I've got it down to about that size, now I'm gonna just use my roller to roll inside these sections, and you are gonna have some waste on the sides, but that's fine. And keep in mind you can always use that in really nice leftover techniques such as the Starry Night technique, um, stropple canes, lots of things. I'm just going to get that going. Okay. So I've got that going pretty well. Now I'm just going to chop off these edges because I've got some distortion going. And I find that chopping these off sometimes helps me uh, avoid too much distortion. You can get an idea of what it's going to look like when we're done here. And then I'll continue pressing and we'll end up with a lot less distortion as we're working with it. Okay, and now I want to reduce this down until I can cut out at least six pieces to create six petals. And I'm actually debating if I want to put a border on this. I probably do. should put a border on it. So I just want to square it up into the right shape. And I am going to put a border on, so let's roll out a piece of black. Okay, so I've rolled this out to about a millimetre thick. And I'm just going to chop these edges here. Like so. Okay. And I'm just going to wrap that around like so there we go now we've got a decent border on this so now I'm just going to continue reducing this until I can cut out at least six pieces okay so here it is reduced and I have cut this into six parts and I've already shaped the other five so now let's shape this one. So what you're going to want to do, I want this to be the point. So first you're going to take the side that you don't want to be a point and you're just gently going to round out those corners, touch, like so. Then you're going to go and do the same on the, on the uh, part that you want to be a point. Then you're going to take that and you're just going to press down on those corners. Flip. Repeat the same process. A bit of a pinch. Just continue pressing until you get that manipulated down into a point. Like so. And I want a nice sharp point. So take your time and make sure to do it properly. And you can flip it at different angles, it really helps to do that. And there we go, I've got a nice sharp point. Now you're going to take this and you're gently going to press on that section just to get rid of that corner and then hold this side in a pinch and this side you want to gently this side you want to gently push into a round shape while pinching on the opposite side so that you keep the point okay. and that should smooth it out into a nice round petal shape now it's a little difficult to see with these ends because uh, they have been distorted a fair bit but we have our petal shape so now they should all fit together nicely so put that off to the side and I'm just going to grab my black and white bullseye cane leftovers and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to squish them together like so, so they're not so bulky just gonna press together like so 
pull it out. So we really only need a very small amount for our um, inside. So just take that, pop that together and it's going to form a very distorted um, kind of messed up middle. Which if it's not something that you want to go for then feel free to create your own middle that's a little less uh, obscure and arbitrary. I quite like that. There we go. Especially since we're going to reduce it down to something that's very small. Alright, now I'm just going to reduce that a bit more. And I want to just chop off one end so I can see what it looks like. And we really only need a small amount, so I'm just going to chop off a small piece. And this is what we're going to work with. So just going to take that and reduce that down a lot. Down to something like that. Just trim off those edges. And there we go. We've got something that will look interesting as a centre. So just position that onto one of... Actually, don't. Don't position it yet. Take these. And position them so that their points touch each other. Like so. And if you find one that you're not happy with as far as the point goes, you can go and touch that up very easily. Like so. And position that again to place. That's one side. Repeat with the other side. Just take that and position them together. Should be pretty easy to do. And then pop that into the centre. And it's still a little bit large. really does not need to be that big. Okay, and that should fit okay. Now I'm just going to trim that now. And now this cane will produce more waste than my other flower canes just simply because of the fact that it's a lot more complex than some of my other flower canes which just used a skinner bin. So there will be a bit of waste with this but remember the waste that you have here you could use for fantastic projects. I'm going to probably do a leftover tutorial on this so let me know in the comments below if you would like a leftover tutorial and I will do one. But keep in mind the more complex you cane uh, the more waste you're going to end up with at the end. But this is still a pretty nice looking flower. Okay, so I'm just making sure that I'm happy with that position with the positioning. And at this point it's a good time to go around and just pinch these little petals around here just to get them into that rounded shape perfectly because the points you don't have to worry about anymore because they're all in the center now. Okay. Now one thing I want to do is I just want to gently trim here. You can easily see what your flower is going to look like now before you do the packing and I just wanted to do that because um, there was a little bit that was a little shorter than the others and so I don't want to waste translucent pack in that area. And you can see what's going to look like. It's going to look very pretty. So now we're going to get onto packing. So pop that to the side and bring over some translucent. Okay, so I've got a nice log here. And you can pack with any colour clay you want. I personally prefer translucent because then I can put it onto any backing I want. Okay, so just cut out even logs. And then I want you to pinch them into a rather flat triangle shape like so and I like to make my translucent a bit softer than the clay that I initially used in the cane and this just allows me to fit it into the right spots without it distorting the cane that's just my personal preference anyway okay there we go so a very flat triangle shape okay. and these fins almost I guess we're going to call them fins you want to stretch out quite a bit because they need to overlap or just run short of overlapping when you pop them on. So pop them like that and then the next one when you put it in there should just touch the edge over here. So let me do that quickly. Okay, like that. Position it so that this pointed bit is in with the petals and then that should just, just 
touch the other one so that you will have a complete translucent layer but one that is not too um too thick so you don't you end up using a ton of translucent to do this and also the less translucent there is around the, the flower when you come to cutting it later on and layering it uh, the less noticeable the translucent is so just continue doing that the entire way around your flower and i'll show you what to do afterwards okay and here is how it looks after you should finish should be finished packing you can see we really have not used a ton of translucent we usually used maybe Let's say maybe one fourth of a block at most. So now I'm just going to take this and I'm gently going to press along those edges. And I don't want to reduce this a huge amount because I like to keep this large if I can. When I do a nice detailed flower like this, uh, I like to keep it fairly large. And if I want to reduce it down, I can always do it later. But right now I want to get rid of any air bubbles. I want to get it nice and pressed together. It's going to look really pretty once I cut it. I do want to let it rest though before I cut it so you're not going to be able to see it immediately after I've reduced it or just, you know, squished it all together. Uh, you're going to have to wait a few seconds. I, on the other hand, will have to wait about half an hour just to let it sit and sit and um, just to let the clay all meld and stick together and it will just make it a lot easier to do this. So you can see I'm just pressing and rolling and then squishing it back down so that it doesn't reduce. And that's just going to be pressing all of that clay together so that we get rid of air bubbles and things like that. Okay. Here you can see it does get a bit of distortion on these edges, which is fine. So now I'm going to let that rest for about half an hour and we will see how it looks once we are done. It should look really quite pretty. Okay, so this has been resting long enough and I can't actually hold myself back from having a look at it any longer. So let's check it out. So where is the I found my flexible blade. Okay, so I'm going to chop it on my side so that I can see what I am doing. And I might, actually before you get to see that, I might want to just um, get a different blade, sharper one. Okay, so I got myself a sharper, thinner blade. Ideally you want to leave this for about half a day before working with it. As you can see that it still sticks. And there we are, you can see how that looks. So ideally leave it a few days or not a few days, a few hours, and you'll end up with something much easier to slice. But you can see there how pretty it looks. You can see what it looks like on the other side as well. Very pretty cane. Uh, a little bit more complicated to make than some of my previous canes. Okay, I'll just slice that so it cleans it up. Uh, but a very effective result. And just keep in mind, you can change up the colours in the petals as much as you want, and it will uh, vary slightly. Um, the technique will vary slightly each time you change the colours and it will look different each time. It actually will look very pretty. So I hope that this tutorial was helpful to you. If you would like to see what I do with the leftovers of this cane, I'll just show you some of the leftovers that we have. We have these cane slices of course, uh, from the distorted edges. We have this cane slice here. We also have these little edge bits uh, from reducing our cane. You can see we do have a fair amount of waste here but that is because it was a pretty complex cane and there was a lot of reducing lots of different canes combined into different things and so if you were to do this with just a simple skinner blade you would end up with less than half of this waste so just keep that in mind the more complex the cane the more waste you're going to end up with but this waste it is not technically waste this stuff you can turn into really beautiful stuff so if you want to see what i do with it let me know in the comments below and i'll get on a leftover tutorial as soon as possible but for now, this is the cane that we have here. It looks really pretty. I hope that you enjoyed it. Remember, different um, colours will make it look different every single time. And just leave it a little bit of time to rest. I had to slice it to see what it looked like. But the more time you leave it to rest, the better it's going to look. So, let me know in the comments below what you thought of this. If you would like to support this channel, please do consider becoming a patron. I'll provide a link to my patron community in the description below the video. 
Uh, I have exclusive tutorials on there every single month that offer patrons only. You could also purchase them on Etsy, but not all of the patron tutorials are on Etsy. You also will get discounts to my Etsy shop of up to 20% off, which is also uh, helpful if you guys tend to purchase tutorials or tools or anything on my uh, Etsy shop a fair amount. So please do consider becoming a patron. Also keep in mind it helps this channel a lot so that I can continue posting videos every single week. And so if you like this tutorial, let me know. Also if you have comments, let me know as well and I'll try to get to them as soon as possible. And I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.